Hi, everyone. What's up, Leo? Hey, Jeff. How are we How's doing? Are we, where are we sitting? Do I we know? you're sitting here. Okay. And I'm sitting here. Fantastic. All right. Is that how we're doing? I guess that's how we're doing. All right. Um, well, hello, everyone. And uh, Leo, great to have you with us. Uh, we are you. here to talk about something that's really important to both of us, which is uh, global gaming citizens, something right. you and I cooked up last year uh, that we launched at the Game Awards. And Leo gives a better pitch than I do probably on this. But the <laughs> idea is, you know, We've both been in the game industry for a long time, and we want to recognize people that are contributing to this community in a positive way. Um, and Leo and I sat down and we said, hey, let's look at people around the world who are doing good things for games and recognize them. And we told yeah. three stories at the Game Awards last year, um, which still, if you watch the show, I'm sure you remember them. They were incredible stories. And today, we're going to tell you more about the program. We're going to introduce two new citizens for the first time here, and yep. uh, you'll hear their stories. But Leo, do you want to talk a bit about the program? I know we have yeah. a little, little setup video too, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we'll, we'll watch the setup video um, in a minute, but I, but I think you and I are both just incredibly passionate about using games to make a difference. And we know that the global gaming community is getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day. There yeah. are more and more gamers. Gaming is almost like ubiquitous, right? Like everybody's a gamer at this point. Yep. And we have a really unique opportunity to shape kind of is our future in gaming going to be positive and incredible and inclusive and inviting to people? Or is it going to be one where people are constantly running around, you know, getting punched in the face or hearing these horrible words from folks, et cetera. So I think, yeah. you know, the inspiration was exactly as you said, like let's use games to just do something positive and let's celebrate people who are doing it right now. So they can be the inspiration for others to say, you know what, there's something we can do here. And I, and I think that's really exciting. No, and I, I feel an obligation with the things that I do that you know, some people are watching them. And it's great to celebrate games, it's great to have world premieres and awards, but it's like, because everyone's tuning in, I wanna represent our industry to the world in the right way. And there's so many amazing people that are doing great things. Yep. Um, and Global Gaming Citizens, you saw last year with the, with the citizens that we recognize, these are people that you know are, are are just doing things for the right reasons and represent, I think, the future, as you said, of what we want our industry to become, which is more inclusive, more diverse, more global. Um, that's one thing I found with the Game Awards is like people, you know, around the world are yeah. love games. I mean, you had like what 30 million people around the world. Yeah, no, and it's it's just, it's like amazing, when, you know, the global aspect. I think that's something yeah. that's really blowing me away. Um, you know, coming from a background of being a television person and thinking, you know, kind of domestically with everything. Now to see the global impact, and that's why it is global gaming citizens. Um, and you'll meet, you know, we should l let's let's run a video now. I think yeah. to show people a bit about the program. Right, let's do it. Awesome, this is Global Gaming Citizens. When I started the show in 2014, the real vision for the Game Awards was to bring everyone together to celebrate what games mean to us. So over the years, we've given out a lot of awards for game developers, content creators, streamers. But one thing that I always thought was kind of missing was an ability to recognize individuals that have contributed to the community in a, a powerful way and deserve to have their stories told. Now tonight, the Game Awards and Facebook Gaming are recognizing global gaming citizens, people who are enriching the lives of others around the world through video games. I call it a recognition, and it's specifically not an award. Global Gaming Citizens is a recognition of people using the power of games to drive positive change in their community. Last year we had hundreds and hundreds of entries. We worked with some people from the games industry to figure out like what are the most powerful stories that we could tell. And then for the very first time working with Jeff, we brought their stories to the Game Awards. The first was Steven Spawn, COO of Able Gamers. And then there's Sadia Bashir, who worked on Pixel Art Games Academy in Pakistan. And then Luol Mayan, um, who's also developing games as well. And he's a Ugandan refugee. There's always a kind of like a right time and place for everything. And it really feels like now is the right time, now is the right place. There are more and more conversations about driving out toxicity from the games community. If you see someone doing something even incredibly small that you think as a gamer represents a global gaming citizen, something that you'd like to see happen more in the gaming industry or deserves to be recognized, submit it. The more people we can recognize, the better we are. 
And this, this isn't a one-time thing. This isn't a two-time thing. This isn't even a 10-time thing. This is an all-the-time thing. Whatever matters to you as a gamer, we want to hear about it because that might be a story we want to tell. There's no one thing that makes an incredible global gaming citizen, except for the fact that they are true believers in doing something incredible for their community. Boy, those guys are smart. Yeah, they are. They're amazing, aren't they? <laughs> it's not just the Jeff and Leo show. Don't worry. We've got yes. some special guests coming out. Um, so as you heard in that video, uh, we recognized a bunch of citizens last year at uh, the Game Awards. And we're very honored that uh, one of the citizens is going to join us now for yep. a uh, conversation. Do you want to set up who our special guest is, Leo? Yeah. So, so uh, our Global Gaming Citizen joining us today is actually Sadia uh, Bashir from Pixel Art Games Academy, and she's working, doing incredible work that she's going to tell us about uh, in Pakistan. So please welcome uh, one of the first f uh, global gaming citizens, Sadia Bashir. Sadia. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to E3. Thank you. Is this your first E3? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey. Global Gaming Citizens rolling in D3, I love it. Um, awesome. So Sadia, we got to, you know, I think we're going to show your story in a second here, but to, to set it up, um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about kind of your mission and what, you know, how you believe games are going to better the world? So, you know, uh, first of all, let me tell you, if I tell my 10-year younger self that I would be sitting at an E3 stage 10 years later, I think she wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll um, believe it. I yeah. used to love video games when I was a little child, like always, like you know. But uh, how, like, I can make games was not really something that I would ever believe like I can. And even when I started making games, it was so much fun. It was so, so, like amazing things, like okay, really entertaining and everything. But there wasn't any place where I could go and see like, hey, I want, I want to learn make, how to make games, so let's start from there. So everybody around me was doing hit and trial, we were looking here and there, so like now, 10 years later, the world is transformed. You have internet, you have tutorials, you have so much platforms, so many places to learn games. But the thing I really felt was missing is like a community which can support and mm. learn from each other. And also, not just from each other, but also get connected to the international audience and see what world is doing and how we can improve ourselves. So that's when I started Pixel Art Games Academy. It's a training institute. Um, it doesn't really look an amazing thing to like, when you say, okay, I'm running an academy. But where I'm running and why I'm running it and what, like how I'm doing it is little something unique. So this is Pakistan's first games academy. And uh, I'm like, when I started it, um, I felt like it's going to be really hard, which was hard because you don't, you don't find a lot of resources, you don't find good people to train, you don't find good experienced people to, around. So I got connected from a lot of international uh, de game developers, people who helped me, mm. and who even taught my students to via Skype, which was like, it's like it's a technology era. So, you know, it's nothing is impossible. So if we can't go to other countries, but we can always have some opportunities created. And I just did not just create opportunities just for myself. Like I've been to GDC, I've been to a lot of other conferences. My aim is to like connect more people and also not just for myself, but for the, all the people that I have back in my home and all my students, all the people who look, look up to me to learn more. Because I don't, myself, I'm not expert of anything. So <laughs> I'm not expert of everything, like, you know. So I need a lot of people, I need a lot of people to connect it and that's what I'm doing through Pixel Art. I do conferences, I do seminars, I also like do a lot of awareness among a lot, uh, in our Pakistani audience, which doesn't know that there's a lot of people who don't know in Pakistan that video game industry can be a, one of the field that they can get into. Okay. Like they don't know how to like you know get into this field. What are the programs? What are the subfields? Like what are the disciplines they can get into? So this all thing is just like all over Pakistan. I go to a lot of cities to do the con like you know seminars, all to workshops and a lot of other events. Even do we do game developers meet up to just to, to, to different cities to actually get the community together yeah. and uh, so far we are able to do like a lot of like great things in different cities and also like uh, our annual games conference that we do every year in Pakistan and we get speakers from all around the world to speak via 
like Skype. Yeah. So it's just like from Australia, from yeah. Europe, from US, from China, from everywhere. Like it gets a lot of people, and that's really amazing. And now I really want somebody, like some people, to actually come to Pakistan and see and meet our game industry in Pakistan. So like, see, because there's a lot of potential. There's un untapped and unexplored potential over there yeah. because we are not as connected and we don't have as much as facilities as you guys have here or in any or other like part of the world to be in the game industry or to get recognized or get like be visible in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I think like, you know, you said a, you said a lot of amazing things. Like I'm just blown away. I didn't know that, that yours was the first games academy in Pakistan. So <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank phenomenal. You. But you. I also think you, you make a great point about there's so many more global gaming gamers in the world today, yeah. and everybody's looking for an audience. They're looking for more people to play their games and learn and share yeah. their experiences. Yeah. Like it's great to to see you doing this work. Like what why do you like what inspires you to keep going? Like it, it's obviously it's clearly not easy, but it's something you're very passionate about. Uh, I think that it's something like I don't know what else to do. Like that's something I really wanted to do. Mm. So if I it's hard. It's every year. I know there's a lot of challenges I face every year. So I don't see anything myself doing anything else. So that's something that's like my mission is. That's something that my goal is, and I'm very stubborn about that. <laughs> so whatever well, I want to do that, I want to do that. <laughs> that's great. No, I, as you said, I think the opportunity for games, what I've found over the past five years, especially with Game Awards, is that there really is like global appeal to, yeah. to games. And I think I was kind of, myopic when I was growing up thinking that kind of, you know, there were different games people played in different parts of the world, right? And there were language barriers, but also cultural yeah. barriers. And now I found that a lot of, you know, games are universally yeah. loved by everyone and there's this passion for, yeah. you know, for games. So before we go too far, we want to actually run Sadia's story. Um, you've heard a bit about her, but now we're going to travel uh, to Pakistan to see a little bit more of Sadia's story. So check this out. When I was growing up, I didn't see any women doing a lot of bigger things in my life. There are not much expectation from girls, or even the girls' education is not like the, like the top priority. I'm from a very humble background. It was difficult for me to pursue this, to make money, to be able to afford the private school so that I can go and study computer science. Getting education, it's not about just getting degree. It's actually getting exposure to the world. You can't be if you can't see. There's a lot of women who can do a lot better in their lives, but they may have not seen those kind of women around. So that's what we are trying to do, is give them an inspiration. Pixel Art Games Academy is a training academy for video game development. Our main focus is actually empowering game developers and creative artists to be able to make their own game ideas. I know that there's a lot of potential in the women in Pakistan and they don't even know that they can work in this industry. They don't even know that they can actually use their talent in this industry. I want people to see what kind of ideas, what kind of creative people we have in Pakistan. This is my biggest dream. Saadi Bashir, our first, one of our first global gaming citizens. But today, we are honored to introduce to you to two new global gaming citizens. This is the first time we're going to introduce them to anyone. And Leo, this is yeah. important, I think, that we want the program. We'll, we'll have new citizens that we'll introduce at the Game Awards this year as well in December. But this is an ongoing initiative that uh, yeah. we want to we want to keep recognizing these folks. Absolutely, we have uh, the opportunity to see so much great work out there, you yeah. know, and, and let's, let's meet someone today. So should we yes. bring out Vanessa? Uh, well, should we? Or maybe we'll, we'll, let's run the story run and then story. we'll get, oh, you already okay. spoiler. Sorry. It's like, all right. So uh, who knows? Anyways. Oops, my bad. Yes. Anyways, let's yes. Let's take a look. We have videos that we prepared on both of these citizens. So yes, uh, please welcome the next Global Gaming Citizen. Check out this video. I always knew that, very cliche, but I always knew that I was different. My mom always knew that something was up. 
We just didn't really have the resources and background to be able to know what it was. I was diagnosed with Asperger's, and around the same time, my mom had lost her job. She raised my sister and me on her own. You know, this, there was this underlying thing where, you know, everyone's telling me that I can't connect with people, so I'm not even gonna try. But when my mom lost her job, I remember this one point. She was in her office. I just remember her getting this look on her face, looking at this stack of bills on the counter, and, and I remember just staring at her. Um, so I was looking at the blinds and I was looking at a painting and its use of color and trying to analyze everything. I knew that something was wrong and I knew I had to go over there and do something to comfort her, but that just didn't come through for me. That day I realized that it was really important um, to be able to connect with people and that, you know, who cares if I, you know, if it was impossible, I should at least try. As much as I hated it, my mom would like have me go up to people in the grocery store or in the 99 cent store and she would watch my conversations and then I'd come and re report back sort of like you know what I learned and what I thought was going on versus what she thought was going on and while that was my inner world and it was really cool learning this new language of social interaction um, I still had a lot of anxiety and low self-esteem about who I was and I hid that diagnosis of Asperger's for six years I didn't want anyone to know all that changed when I went to college, I found some just amazing friends that, you know, later became my co-founders that really just changed my outlook. For the first time, I could look back at myself and I could be, have compassion for 10-year-old Vanessa, who had no idea what she was doing. I could look at her and say, you were just trying to figure out who you were. And so that's, I mean, I guess that's why I'm, what I'm doing now through Social Cipher. Social Cipher is a story-driven video game that gives kids with autism a safe and accessible place to apply social skills. We create experiences and characters all based on interviews with families across the country. Being able to show other kids that may have been in my situation, you know, are low income like I was, or that are females with autism like that, or just anyone who has felt different, there's nothing wrong with you. You are amazing and awesome and you are just seeing the world in a way that no one else can. And you just need to figure out a way to communicate that. She's here with us. Please welcome Vanessa Gill. <laughs> Vanessa, welcome. Great to have you with us. Uh, awesome to be here. <laughs> and you're not the only person joining us because we have another citizen that we're going to bring out as well, and then we'll talk we to everyone together. Uh, please welcome the next inductee into the Global Gaming Citizens Program. Growing up in a changing landscape like the Bay Area is... It's hard to describe. This place is changing, but am I gonna be able to change with it? I was halfway through high school. I felt kind of lost. I knew I wanted to do something with video gaming. I just didn't know where to start. We do this every Saturday. This is it, every Saturday. So Game Heads is a social venture that teaches game design, development, and DevOps to low-income students of color. And uh, in a few, our students are gonna come in, they're gonna be loud, they're gonna be rambunctious, they're gonna have a lot of energy. Some of them are gonna be a little lethargic and they need some energy, so we're gonna give them that. All right, guys, so listen up, listen up. Whenever I go to like video game companies, they always want to do the same thing. They want to like bring a bus here and have you guys come onto the bus and then go to their companies and see how great it is to work there. And I'm always like, no, we don't do that. We don't want to do that. No, they're, they're not learning anything. They're just seeing where you work. I'm like, what they want is they want what you know, right? That's it. 
They just want what you know. We teach everything, game design, level design, narrative design, coding. All of our classes are taught by game developers. Well, I do it because as someone in the industry, I'm mostly tired of feeling like a unicorn, you know? I have not worked with a lot of women of color and the numbers are just not moving. So for me, one, I want to see the numbers change and mostly I just want to play some really great ideas. <laughs> We want our students to challenge the traditional ways of, of looking at video games and put their own sort of stamp into it, their own culture, their family, their communities, their schools. It's pretty clear the industry needs these kids. I didn't expect the outcomes we have. Our students are getting into the top colleges in the United States. There are colleges coming to us asking us for kids. I didn't think four years later I would kind of be where I am. I'm in college. <laughs> There's opportunities popping up left and right for me and my friends around me. It's kind of, it's kind of an amazing feeling actually. It's a really exciting time for people who are interested in video games and have a different look and a different feel and I'm hoping people start making room for our students because they're coming. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Damon Paquin. Game heads. Hello, Damon. What's up, man? Welcome. Well, this is so cool. Uh, Thanks. And inspiring stories. Uh, Absolutely. Emblematic of kind of what the program should represent. I wanted to ask all you guys, I mean, and starting maybe with uh, Vanessa and Damon, what drives you to do what you're doing? You obviously love games, but you're, you're doing something that, you know, I think all of us look at and say, we should support this. We, we want to see more of this. So tell, tell us about kind of what's motivated you to do it and, and why you do what, what, you, what you guys are doing. Oh, man, so many things. <laughs> I guess I'll go first. Um, for me, really what motivates it is, I mean, we have, we have so many failures, you guys. We have so many failures, so many times where things feel dark and I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but whenever I get out and I test a kid, um, or I test, uh, we have the very first test of our game, uh, who's also our main character, her name is Ava, um, and she, I just see myself in her so much. Um, and I think just being able to see them react to the game and relate to the characters and say, oh my gosh, that's me. Um, seeing them being able to relate to the characters and realizing that I'm giving something to them that I didn't have when I was younger. Just makes me so excited to keep going. Um, when I was younger, I didn't have people to look up to that were like me. Uh, I felt that there was something wrong with me all that time for all those six years. Um, and if I had just had someone that had, you know, had some similar traits to me and could tell me, hey, there's nothing wrong with you. You are amazing just the way you are. Things would have totally changed. Um, so I think it's my duty, and I'm just so honored to have this mission to be able to give that to other kids. So I think that drives me. No, and it's a, to see that, that impact. Uh, I'm sure, David, same for you with, you know, working with these kids. I'm sure it's, it's, it's motivating every day probably to, to, to see, uh, see the impact you're having. But tell us a bit about, I mean, what, what, what drives you to, you know, to keep pushing on this? I mean, honestly, because it's just fun. <laughs> I mean, it's right. cool. It's yeah. exciting. Like... You know, if a student does well, you know, I, I hook them up with a, a top-notch game developer from Riot Games. If, they, if yeah. they get good grades, I give them a keyboard and, you know, a mouse from, like, Logitech or something like that, you know? So it's, I always have this rule. It's just don't be boring, you know? Just, mm. just have fun and, and be exciting and create learning opportunities. I think at this point in, in my career, I just, I just want to see something change, something tangible, and uh, I think we managed to create a program where we're, we're seeing some, some actual, real, tangible change. And that's well, really fun. All you guys are giving back in such incredible ways, yeah. I think, when you think all these stories. Uh, you are, you know, not only helping the industry, you're helping kind of the next generation. You're paying it forward, I think. And that's one thing that I think unites all three of you, which, at least to me, Leo, is, is so, so magical that, uh, you know, you're, you're in many ways introducing new citizens of a next generation that, that will hopefully continue to pay it forward with, with all that you guys are yeah. doing too. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's entirely inspirational because of course we're all better off when more people, more diverse backgrounds have better access 
have the opportunity to inspire others because we don't know where all the incredible ideas are going to come from. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can come from anybody in this room and anybody on this stage. Yeah. We're part of this you know, community of gamers around the world um, who I think all want this industry to sort of grow and prosper um, in the right ways. So I think for everyone watching this or here in the audience at E3, do you guys have any advice on, on how people here can help, how they yeah. can sort of you know, help what you're doing, but also I think, you know, affect positive change. I think a lot of people, a lot of gamers, you know, want to do more, um, but they sometimes don't know sort of, you know, how to do it. So do you guys have any thoughts on sort of what, what an average sort of gamer should be doing to kind of improve the community? Um, I think uh, to developers from mainstream game uh, development industries should also uh, like connect with the emerging industries because there's a lot of creative, there's like a lot of creative ideas and unexplored talent over there. And yeah. also like a lot of communities I know myself like struggles to like, you know, get improve and get access to good resources for learning. And I think this is something that can really change. Like a person sitting in Pakistan, if they have an access to the learning that they have here, can actually go really beyond their potential yep. because they have so much potential, but there's a lack of a lot of opportunities there. So yeah. I think one thing that I would really like if somebody wants to connect with me and to, you know, be, to be able to speak with my students or give any piece of advice or learning that they can, that would be really nice. And Pixel Art Games Academy is my company's name. And I'm here, you can have a talk with me after the panel. And I think that's, that's a really great thing that I want. And also, if somebody wants to come to Pakistan, I have my full support. <laughs> <Okay. And> so <laughs> you're awesome. more than welcome. And just like come and join Open us. Open invitation. Our, yeah, so we, our conference name is Games Emerge Conference. And we do it every year. And I would love to have people to come over and speak in Pakistan. Great. Awesome. Damon, anything? Yeah. Um, so I think the reason, the reason that we wanted to do a more traditional video game for Social Slafer and our newest game, Ava, um, was because when it comes to the autism community, if we're creating a game with an autistic character for the autism community, of course, that's great for representation. Um, but it's more that we preach into the choir. They know that they need this representation. They know they need to be accepted by society. But what we really need is for the generalized gaming community to be able to play this game from a different person's perspective. Yeah. I mean, video yeah. games uniquely convey this experience of being human. And it is just this infinite amount of different ways or different types of humans you can be. Um, and so being open to playing through a character that has a different perspective or different experiences is just super beneficial to create empathy and build that and give you your first sort of experience into realizing what it's like to live in another person's shoes. Um, so I think being open to that is one huge thing. Um, personally, for I mean, just for a company and uh, our gaming, our, our games and everything, uh, for us, we are always, always happy to take testers. We test with families and young adults and professionals across the country on the spectrum constantly, um, just because we want this to be the most accurate portrayal and the best possible game it can be. Um, so that's one, if you know people on the spectrum, if you're interested in playing, uh, we're always taking testers. Um, and then the other thing is we actually have a Kickstarter going on right now. Uh, so if you want to contribute, if you want to become one of our, part of our dev team, uh, part of our Discord channel. Uh, I welcome you to uh, check out our Kickstarter, too. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, I think the biggest challenge for us is that we get requests from other cities, um, and even just California in general, we just can't get out, mm. you know? So uh, we're uniquely positioned in the Bay Area to be able to do the program, but once you start seeping out of the Bay Area, it gets a little bit challenging. So. One thing I always tell people is, uh, look, you know, I, I think we got something really special going on and uh, we want to grow it and we want to support. So, uh, you know, one thing I, I always say that the biggest um, story that the, 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 the gaming press isn't reporting on is the amount of video game developers that are attached to the program that donate their time for free. Right. Uh, join us. We've got a 200 plus network of wow. of. Uh, game developers all over the world. That's awesome. um, so uh, join us and, and uh, tell your colleagues to do so as well, and then support the program and help us grow, man. Like that's 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 what we're looking for. Amazing. Awesome. Well, 
three incredible stories. Uh, and again, when I think Leo and I first started this, we didn't know what we were going to find. But every time I know when I, we we see the applicants, and these are just rep representative sample of some of the That's amazing right. folks that. Uh, are part of this program. So, Lee, I want to thank you and Facebook for all your support of this. You bet. Um, you bet. Well, Likewise, you thank you. I mean, it's been yeah. awesome partnering with you and coming up with these ideas and meeting these people and just trying to build a platform to do incredible yeah. things. And so, you know, having 30 million people around the world watching this stuff and launching it at the Game Awards is incredible. And it's a great way to emphasize that these stories are so important. Yeah, no, no, as I said, uh, awesome. I want the Game Awards moving forward to tell more of these stories and the fact that you guys were willing to kind of step in and help us, uh, you know, tell these, find these folks, tell these stories, um, and share them with the world uh, means everything to me. So thank you, and thank you guys for yes, all that you do. You uh, we'll be hearing much more from you, I think, in the months ahead. And, of course, at the awards in December, we'll have more stories, and hopefully all you guys with us to, to celebrate games. <laughs> awesome, so, uh, yes. All right, well, it's an open invitation. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone. The Global Gaming Citizens, applause. please. All right. Thank you.